Howdy diddly dandy there, chums, tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I want to talk a little bit about Sean's tweet, where he put on out the gib emoji for this latest update. Now, the gib emoji is reserved for sort of milestone updates. You're talking like big version numbers, like version 2.0, version 2.5, version 3, version 3.75, those sort of big milestone-y type updates. We're currently on version 4.7. I don't think this is going to be version of 4.75. I think it's going to jump from 4.72 all the way up to version 5. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I think this is going to be a giant marked milestone update because we've got the give emoji. Shall we take a look back in time, people, at all the other times that Sean of the Murrays has used the give emoji? I think we should. So let's jump on over to the old Tinter web, shall we? Heck yes. Papa, chicka -pum -pum, and here we are over on the old Tinterwebs. And the first time that the Shaun of the Murrays used the Gib emoji was for No Man's Sky and Next. And we all know how big No Man's Sky Next was. I mean, it brought in multiplayer and all sorts of other stuff. I mean, all the patch notes live here. We could go through the patch notes. Or, since this is YouTube and we use in video format, why not use a video? All right, so you know what? Let's make this a little bit larger on screen. Like yes, chicka pow pow, chicka boom boom. So I'm gonna just hit play on this one then, people. So yeah, it goes into every atom leaf procedural, all that sort of shenanigans. Like yes, is it at atom level yet? Still questionable that one. But anyways, you can see there under the waters, we hadn't had abyss at this point in time though. So the actual underwater environments were still quite sort of generic in a roundabout way. And the base building parts were still rather limited to what we could actually use. But the abyss update actually came not so long after this update and brought in all that extra good stuff. But anyway, you're looking in the top left hand corner to see what sort of other things get brought into the game. So we've already seen multiplayer has been realized. I remember when this trailer dropped, everybody went freaking ballistic outside inside of the community. There was some swearing, a heck of a lot of swearing, in fact, people. It was pretty funny, to be fair. Everybody just lost their minds. But yeah, pretty darn freaking lovely. Now, I would say that in the next sort of update, they did alter terrain generation a little and maybe took away some of the craziness when it came to terrain generation. But everything else was pretty darn freaking on point. I mean, we got our own capital ships. We got given exo crafts. We got given so much inside of the next update. You know, there's down freighters. There's all sorts of stuff going on there. A little bit more sort of freightery battles and bits and bobs going on. Now, this sort of bit of the trailer is a bit... A bit sort of come on we didn't get that you know multiple walkers just strolling around no we didn't get that Heck no <laughs> cool so that was no man's sky next it brought a heck of a lot of content in people i mean you, you've only just got to scroll through this and have a look you know multiplayer in there community engagement galaxit atlas website all sorts of stuff, more base building parts, uh, a lot to do with how you actually refine the tech and all that sort of good stuff. It really reshaped the game when we got No Man's Sky next. No Man's Sky next remains one of the biggest game changers out there, people, when it comes to crafting, resources, gathering, everything. Anyway, after that, the next one that got a gib was the Abyss update, which I just mentioned earlier. So here we go. Let's just hit play on this one. Make sure that it's muted. And here we go. So yeah, the Abyss, this brought in more sort of underwater base components and parts that we could be build. Better improved ocean rendering, like it's in the top left hand corner there. 20 plus new construction modules, including these tubes that he's walking through right now, or they're walking through right now. Indoor aquarium. <laughs> I can't believe that they listed that as something special. But yeah, I still use it today though. Times five underwater biomes. So considering we've got like you know, about 50 odd biomes to have five underwater ones, it'd be nice to have that expanded upon it really would. New creature behaviors. Yeah, we've got that ship that bursts out the ground and chases you, which is pretty darn freaking scary. New trade goods. Yeah, you've got loads of bits and bobs like the you know, Hadel cores and the, the abyssal eye and all that sort of shenanigans. And those eyes can actually grab you and pull you closer and all that sort of stuff. Loads of new story lore. It was just the 
abyss sort of story arc that gives you that basosphere helmet buried treasures underwater all sorts i think did this even give us the nautilan exocraft but anyway it, you can see everything that it's given i mean this massively overhauled the oceans massively so it did bring a lot into game and i feel that it was gib deserved i mean it is quite a large update it did change the oceans but we could do even a, a bit more deeper oceans and more aggressive fauna but here you go this is this is where you can sometimes trigger that fish to come and chase you which is quite nasty yeah there's a nasty little critter that one i guess coolio so that gives you a good idea of what brought in inside of abyss but there you go there's nautilan there better ways to actually swim better swimming sort of mechanics all round to be honest yeah, I kind of enjoyed the Abyss. The Abyss was all right. It added a little bit of extra depth, especially if you're playing in VR and swimming around and, and doing all that sort of shenanigans underwater, which, lovely. So there we go. That was the Abyss update. And this trailer does go on for a fair bit longer, but I think you get the idea. It was underwatery type stuff. Loads of it. I mean, look at it. Look at it all. It's, it's freaking insane. So yeah, massive update, really, when it comes to oceans. I mean, a lot of people will say, but is it really with the only five biomes and that? But it did bring a lot in. Okay, so next off is Visions, and we're at version 1.75 now. Now, Visions itself doesn't feel like a big sort of update on the surface. But when you delve into Visions, it did do quite a lot when it came to planet variation. I mean, it gave us these lovely exotic biomes. Anyway, I'll hit play on this one. Here we go. And there we are. I mean, I think that Visions actually tamed down planet generation quite a fair bit. I know Next dialed it down a little, but Visions, I feel, dialed it down even more. And Visions, I think, is where they started making it where planets felt a little bit more alive. They added creatures on pretty much every planet and this is where it almost felt more of a copy pasted experience for me so when um, people talk about visions as being gib worthy there are elements inside of it that yes definitely you know like adding these exotic planets in adding in these additional sort of crazy creatures which was pretty darn nice adding in these sort of, uh, bones added in the ancient bones added in salvageable tech um, it added in a couple of extra biome types, um, added in corrupted sentinels. There was all sorts that this added in. But for everything that it added in, what it also done is made the exploration experience, I feel, slightly more bland because it just felt like all the creatures had been copy and pasted and I could see patterns far easier. Even though it added in more variety, added in more biomes, it then took away in a roundabout way at the same time. It also took away that feeling of loneliness and, and isolation and that not every planet had life. It was either this one that did it or it might have been um, the Visions update. I always get Prisms and Visions sort of confused. Yeah, they sound similar to me, visions and prisms, but both of them were kind of, in my opinion, quality of lifey type sort of updates in a roundabout way. Although they did add in a little bit of extra variety, they felt a little bit, hmm, okay, fair enough. They added in a bit more cos cos copy and pasted variety. Anyway, the Beyond update, I mean, this one was Gib sized mainly because it brought vr into the iteration which is pretty darn freaking gnarly uh yeah this was pretty interesting <clears throat> but considering it is um mainly the vr update and they added in a little bit of expanded multiplayer they increased the lobby sizes things like that I, I, i'm not going to click the trailer on this one because it was just pretty much putting everything into vr mode and increasing that sort of social area, updating a little, a little, a little UI type tweaks. I think you all know what Beyond actually had and what it did. It done a lot around multiplayer. It did a lot around VR, but that's that's pretty. It was a big update, but if you didn't have VR, it only done so much, and it didn't go to town too much. It was. It was more quality of lifey if you didn't have VR and it was a little bit of an expansion onto multiplayer, but it was still really big, still really big. Origins. Now, I thought the Origins was the last time we had a Gib emoji. It's not. We actually had two more Gib emojis after Origins. It's just 
Anyway, we'll get to those in a moment. But here we go. Here's No Man's Sky Origins. Now, this was quite beefy. I'm going to hit this one up. So let's hit play on there. Boom, boom. And let's go through this little trailer. Okay, so we get the normal sort of intro. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, double thumbs up there. You can't see me doing my double thumbs up. I'm off the screen, but I am doing it a double thumbs up. So this one added in some new gnarly creature types like the beetles, like the butterflies, added in a little bit more variety to the planets, added in a colossal archives, which were pretty darn freaking nice. I think this one also brought in the giant mega sandworms, but we'll get to that as we're going through this lovely trailer. But this is where No Man's Sky for me took shape in No Man's Sky Origins. Now, Sean of the Murrays did say that No Man's Sky Origins was going to be the way that they pave things forwards, that they're going to try and make their updates a little bit like this. And then we didn't really get many more updates like this, which was a bit strange. I mean, he'd done a whole IGN interview where he was saying, you know, we have dialed down the variety. Origins is going back to our original sort of a blueprint where we add in a bit more crazy variety, add in that sense of exploration and immersion. And they did that very well inside of the Origins update. This is by far one of my favourite of updates. This one and next are my two favourite updates, if I had to say which ones were my faves. And this also gave us the AI modules, I believe, for our... Um, uh, well, it gave us the min Minotaur AI modules, I believe. But yeah, it was it was a fantastic update, this one. I mean, the sandworms, it would be nice if they were more interactable rather than just sort of like set dressing and just there for show. But yeah, Origins, awesome update. Really liked Origins. Now, if you do scroll down on Origins, you're going to see there's a heck of a lot more that was you know, inside of that trailer, but it gets expanded upon. It's it's awesome. I mean, they gave us different game modes, screens and all that sort of shizzle. Awesome. New alien fauna, new sort of worlds. I remember logging into Origins and it almost made No Man's Sky feel like a new experience coming across some of these new creatures, coming across these new planets. Origins kept me busy for a good couple of weeks, where a lot of other updates keep me busy for a good couple of days. So, yeah, I am really hoping that we get another update that is on par with Origins. That's what I'm hoping for, people. I'm hoping for Origin level, maybe even going up to next level, but we shall see. We shall see. I mean, version 5.0, if we do do that leap in numbers, I'm hoping, yes, it's going to be a bigger update than what I originally envisioned. And yeah, I don't think it's just going to be cross save. I mean, you can see the size of Origins, you can see the size of Next, you can see the size of all of these updates and just how big the actual scroll bar is and how big it all is. See, that was version 3.0. Now we are jumping to a version five. So let's just hope, hey people. Okay, right, No Man's Sky Expeditions was the next one. This was version 3.3. OK, so let's hit this one up now. Expeditions, people will say, well, is that really big? Well, it's still in use today. So every single expedition that we get is thanks to this update. So I would say, yes, this was very much Gib Worthy. There we go. Anyway, I think you all know what expeditions are and how they've been delivered in. I mean, we get them all the time now. These are sort of like limited time events where you can get some decent rewards. They add in sometimes a little bit of lore, a little bit of new narrative. And yeah, it's it's awesome. It's awesome for the community. It's awesome for everybody that wishes to take part in these. I mean, originally these started out as, you know, you have their throwaway saves, but now we've got this new console inside of the Spatial Anomaly, which allows you to sort of bring your legacy save into an expedition and run this inside of your normal save, making them far more integrated and integral to your actual legacy save. So yeah, expeditions. Some people will say, probably not gib worthy i would say it is because it's still an ongoing thing and it's still awesome okay right so next off we have prisms now this is the one that i usually get sort of you know, mixed up with visions visions and prisms uh, yeah, but this was version 3.5 so here you go Let, let's hit this one up and let's hit play on this boom this is no man's sky prisms 
Awesome. I don't know why we're not seeing the uh, text in the top corner every single time, but detailed more cave biomes, which was lovely, and massive overhaul to caves, with volumetric lighting, and also all the fauna or flora that appears inside of the caves has been greatly sort of um, you know, increased. Yeah, you can actually ride flying pets like the beetles and the butterflies and all that sort of shenanigans in this one as well. Dynamic weather effects even make your sort of textures look all shiny and wet looking. Creature fur added in. I mean, you can see all these things popping up in the left hand corner and I'm just reading them. Exotic companions as well, which is pretty darn lovely. So there's quite a lot that came into this one. So refractions, light changes, graphical overhaul. This was a massive graphical fidelity uplift from previous sort of incarnates of no man's sky this really did focus on the modern of graphics cards for all of the pc sort of genre and brought in some nice effects for next gen platforms but not only that they did try to bridge the gap and sort of improve some of the graphic fidelity on the older consoles and platforms and increase the frame rate and the smoothness of play and i think they did a massive good job on doing that and then shortly after this it came out to switch now, we haven't seen many GIB updates since this. In fact, we've seen none since this. And I think mainly because it has been to do with porting these over to platforms like the Steam Deck, like getting it onto Switch and uh, making sure the masses can play it. And a lot of the actual updates that we've seen from here onwards have been around core functionality, optimization, and not so much on content. It's all about been you know, quality of life experience with recent updates. Okay, chums, you can see here, we're actually on update 4.72. Now, there could be a chance this jumps to 4.75. And if it does jump to version 4.75, I think it might be a lot smaller. Uh, even though it's a gib, it could be cloud and cross save. Hello Games may consider that as being big because it is game changingly big. It could almost be Gib worthy looking at some of the other ones that we've had before, like the VR, like Beyond. You know, Beyond was very surface level. It only applies if you've got multiple platforms. But for those that have got multiple platforms, those that want to go play on their Switch or on their Steam Deck or on their Apple Mac or whatever, it's big. It's going to save them loads of time. I myself are playing on PlayStation 5. I want to get my PC save as far as my PlayStation 5 save. It could save me over 90 hours of play. So, you know, it, it would be big for me. Would I say it's Gib worthy? Not for the whole community, but for some, yes. So it could go to version 4.75. That is still on the cards. So although that I'm trying to keep hype in check, looking at all the other updates that have been Gib worthy have been big, haven't they? They have. They've been very big. Anyway, let's uh, just jump back over to the old Tinterwebs for a second. Let's make that a little bit bigger on the screen. And uh, we're going to have a quick look at some of these other tabs. So this is what I mean by Gib. It's this weird sort of emoji thing that Sean's put out here. And you know, I signed it off here to say, if there is a trailer in the next couple of days with voiceover lady, like all those trailers that I just played you, I've, I'm going to go seriously bonkers because it would list in the top corner everything that we're going to get. We usually used to get the trailers before we got the patch notes, before we got the update, sometimes a week in advance. I think if it's going to be a big marked update, like if it does jump to version five, we'll probably see a trailer this week and then the update next week. So that hype can settle in. And it also gives them time to then get the sales going on every platform. The summer sale for PlayStation is still running until I believe the 17th till Wednesday till tomorrow. So I don't think we're going to see the sales happen or release happen until tomorrow at least. But we might see the trailer before then. We may even see the trailer today, tomorrow. But yeah. Let's see. Anyway, I think this is going to jump versions. I think this is going to jump to version 5 is what I'm thinking, people. And I think it's going to be a lot larger. This is all the times that we've seen the Gib emojis with the dates. Ghostlight chimed in. And Ghostlight actually put down the names here, which helped me fuel this video. So thank you very much for doing a little bit of homework there, Ghost. This has helped massively. So I've put here, I think this update will be 5.0. And this is what I hope that it has. The Void Realm... Station Overrides, ARG Part 4 and Law, the Incinerator plus Modules, to make it S-Class and all that sort of living, lovely stuff, Living Ship Tech and Modules, because a Living Ship is greatly underpowered when it comes to tech and what it can have. It can't even have rockets. We've got Settlement Overhaul, mainly because it's not on Switch right now, so maybe they need to dial it back, make it more functional, make it more fun, even on the other platforms, but then bring it to Switch. 
cooking rework yes because you know, at the moment turning those in is like watching paint dry and what do we use it for more of this cooking stuff needs to have more perks ship perks and missions so at the moment all of our ships are very samey be nice if they had their own related perks and things like that i mean the living ship can actually go for a black hole hole and not take any damage that sort of perk but apply to each of the different ships give them all their own perks and also ship related missions multiplayer stability well if we are going to be going over to light no sky it's uh, light no fire at some point in time you know that game's its core is whole multiplayer we need to have better multiplayer here in no man's sky rebirth of dead systems so i've used a little x-ray image here because i think it'd be done in the similar sort of way as utopia where you scan everything on planets and inside of a system and then bring the system back to life through scanning and cataloging a system and then making it appealing to a race and then the race comes in and takes over the system and brings it back to life so they're the things that i hope i hope will be in version 5. Not the things that I think will be in version 5. The things that I think will be in ver version 5 are these ones. Global saves, Walker, Sentinel Walker boss overhaul, add an energy bars to the Sentinels, that sort of stuff. Additional wonders for the wonders catalog. The realm of glass, and maybe seeing, you know, the... Um, the, the void mother maybe even completion of the arg part four here autophage and nexus raids we've got the autophage built inside of the spatial anomaly i call him man spider hence why i use the my the little uh, spider emoji there but yeah him little man spider guy i think he might give us raids into the realm of glass custom game modes so i'm hoping you know like how um a Beeble and Jason Place and all that those guys do like a no starter ship challenge where you can't use your starter ship you have to find another ship to get off the planet and you've got certain aspects that you can and can't do that sort of thing I'm wondering whether we might be able to make our own game mode share them with other players so it makes it a lot easier to sort of play this as a sandbox and have sandboxy type modes and that will make sense if they are moving to another title to give the reins over to the community a little bit more. Super formula assets. So although I don't think they're going to apply the super formula to everything, they could easily put in, say, some wireframes that are distorted through a super formula to make every rock and every tree at least look different on the higher end platforms and maybe next gen platforms. It might not work with, you know, the likes of Switch or something, but it'd be nice to have wavy davy trees, you know, that have got bends in the trunks and things and every tree looks a bit more organic make the planets feel a little bit more alive so super formula on assets only not on creatures not on planet terrain nothing that's going to upset parving but just certain assets i'm wondering what we might see the super formula applied ship customization i think we're going to have that expanded upon i think at least to shuttles and solar ships because we've seen them inside of other trailers inside of other patch notes whether it was intentional or by accident by hello of the games i think they're hinting that ship customization is going to come to more ship types than the three that we see currently so that's what i think is going to be inside of this update um based on what's inside the game now that's what i wish is going to be inside of the update what i hope for but yeah follow me over on twitter people yes it's just at n captain steve follow me over there if you're on twitter or x or whatever you want to call it anyway one of my tweets actually made it into kontaku so Kontaku, I'm not the biggest fan of Kontaku, if truth be told. I, I, I've read a few of their articles. I don't go and hit them up on a regular basis. But there we go. If I scroll on down and keep going a little bit further, there's my tweet. They featured my tweet. Heck, yes, they did, which is pretty darn cool. I think it's the first time I've ever been featured inside of a Macca scene. And you can see here, it says that I go seriously nuts. If in the next 24 hours or so, we end up with a trailer with voiceover lady. Now, this was almost 24 hours ago. I put it up at 3 p.m. yesterday. Um, and right now, it's what? It's uh, lunchtime now. So maybe in the next three hours or so, I wonder if Kontaku has some sort of insider information that we're going to see a new trailer. I mean, they usually feature the new trailers on their actual site. So I'm wondering whether we're going to see voiceover lady trailer within the next three to four hours uk time and then i'm wondering whether the update itself will appear this sort of time next week maybe wednesday of next week on all platforms just to keep that hype level going to keep it growing 
and uh, to sell more copies of No Man's Sky. At the moment, No Man's Sky is on sale over on Steam only, and it's a 60% off. Let me bring that up on screen. Okay, jump. So here you can see that we've got the Adrift sort of trailer playing in the background here. But if I scroll on down, it's down to 60%. Now, this special promotion ends on July 29th. So we're definitely going to have the update, I believe, before July 29th. So, yeah, that one I think you can take to the bank that there's going to be an update between now and July 29th. Is the sale on all other platforms not as yet, people? So here we are on PSN. You can see here it's $39.99. Now I can hit up all the other platforms, Xbox and Nintendo Switch. Currently, they are all sitting at full price. There is no change at the moment. I'll let you know if that changes in due course. Okay, John, so that's all the news that I have to cover for you when it comes to this No Man's Sky emoji. So the emoji and the gib. The gib emoji that Sean does, as you can see there, it's normally reserved for pretty big, substantial content updates that either bring in content, lore, or something to do, or massive overhauls to something. I mean, Beyond was pretty much VR. There wasn't much there other than a few quality of life improvements, but VR was big because it wasn't just a PlayStation VR. It came to all platforms of VR. It was pretty much an undertaking and a half for No Man's Sky. Let's face it, if you played it in VR, you'd know how mind-blowing that was. Definitely Gib-worthy. All those updates have been Gib-worthy. This update is going to be Gib-worthy. I'm really excited. You know, it could be as small as something like Visions or Prisms or Beyond. Or it could be something as massive and as big as Next or Origins. Okay? Now, if it's somewhere in between the two of those, still loads of content still a bit of a refresh a bit of life we're talking a couple of weeks of content not a couple of days of content i am super excited yes i am people inside the viewerverse till next time goodbye goodbye and goodbye again